Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy. In my last video, I talked about the benefits of paying for the full version of Contact and why some libraries work in the free player whilst others need you to use the full paid version. The majority of Spitfire Audio libraries are available in the free version of Contact, but there are some gems that only work in the full paid version. Now, most of these libraries were released a while ago, so they might not even be on your radar. So I thought today I would walk through some of them to give you an idea what they could add to your Sonic palette. Just remembering that you have all these libraries can sometimes be a bit of a problem because, of course, if you've got all these library instruments, then you have all these nice graphics to remind you about them. So this is where the quick load comes in. So I've set up a bunch of quick loads here so you can see I can quickly come to any of these libraries and just pick out the instruments that I want. Doing this is actually quite straightforward. So if you have any full contact libraries, so these can be ones from Spitfire, they could be from Piano Book, they could be from any source. Uh, you just go and find them on the file system. Now, this is me looking at my Spitfire drive and um, that I've got all of my stuff on here. And uh, you actually need to use this middle pane to make any of this work. So I'm going to uh, load up the editor for quick load. You do that by doing a right click here on a blank space. Um, and you can see we've got this uh, set up here. I always tend to have this editor sort of rather large so that I can scroll around it a little bit easier. I've got it locked. Um, that just prevents me from making an error with it. So I'm going to unlock it here and I'm going to take one of the libraries. Um, this is the HG2O library and I just drag and drop it from the left hand side into the middle. So you need to do it for, again from this middle pane to make that work. What's nice about that is it's replicated the entire structure of that library. So we've got the instruments, subdirectory, the Mercury synth, etc. So that whole thing is now uh, replicated in there. And of course, that's also going to appear um, in here as well. Instead of taking the whole of the library in here, you can actually just pick out particular patches and put them in and create your own subfolders as well in the quick launch. Personally, I did try doing that before and it was just a lot of effort and not really worth it. So this just drag and drop the entire library in and let it populate all the subfolders for me was just a little bit easier. So let's head over to the Spitfire website and if we go into the all products section, um, there's a load of obviously the, the new stuff at the top, but if we go down towards the end of this long list, loads of libraries, amazing stuff. Um, so this is the section that we're going to be really um, focusing on in this video. Um, so I've picked up a few of these and I thought I'd give them a play. So the first one I'm going to look at is the uh, Eulophone. Uh, it's a two and a half octave chromatic array of aluminium bells. So very interesting uh, instrument. So let's, let's just play the, the first sound out of the box. It's the bowed sound. And of course, we can use the expression controls here to bring those up. So along with that, um, we've got some sh shorter sounds as well, some soft beaters. And some hard beaters, short hard beaters as well here. Now, one of the things that you don't see so much in the Spitfire products today is the, um, the Ostinatum. Um, I think uh, it's officially said the Ostinatum. Uh, so if we go in here, this is kind of interesting because you can create these Ostinatos uh, within this screen. So there's uh, multiple of them. Um, you can have up to eight of these Ostinatos. Um, so I'm going to just turn it on. And I thought it was quite interesting with this short bowed sound. So I'm going to put it in order pressed uh, with this uh, chord mode. And I've just made up some random just by clicking these uh, notes in here, just randomly add them in and just see what that sounds like. So it sort of makes this kind of interesting glossy sound that I quite enjoy. Obviously, if we put it onto something that's harder, you'll hear the notes much more. So quite some interesting stuff that you can do there. The next one is uh, Chrysalis. Um, this is uh, Samuel Sim. Um, so if you've used uh, British Drama Toolkit, it's the same guy. Uh, so really great stuff um, in this uh, library. 
And this uh, library is really made up, um, as it says, from using the harp and then warping it into all sorts of organic different sounds. A very interesting uh, soundscapes here. So here are some bowed harp sounds, which I thought was quite interesting. So obviously there are some natural harp sounds in this library, but I thought I'd pick some slightly more unusual sounds. It sounds almost like a string player, but obviously this is a harp, and so you can't quite tell. And I think that's very interesting about this library is that you, it's sort of making sounds that you wouldn't necessarily associate with the harp. So let's have a look at these octave trems. of fun to be had with that almost like the harp swarm uh, library but much more uh, intimate and of course you've got a lot more control over how that's going to happen let's take a look at cathedral lift so this is uh, now we're processing these sounds through a bunch of pedals haunting sound that one and let's take a look at the cathedral twinkle interesting stuff. So next library, um, I'm going to take a look at the Cymbalon. Um, so this is a Hungarian instrument. I think you'll probably recognise, uh, maybe the, if you don't recognise the picture of it, you will probably recognise the sound of this particular instrument. So that's the, the sound of it with the, the pedal down. Let's take a look at some of the other sounds we've got here. Sort of a tremolo sound. And with the pedal up. We're gonna take a look at HG2O. Um, so this is um, a take on the, the water phone. So if you've heard any horror scores, you've probably heard this sound before. You, you tend to play this instrument by, by bowing these uprights here. So here's the more traditional uh, sounds. One of the things I really liked about this library is a, a Jake Jackson signature on it. I think you might have seen it on a few of the other ones. We don't see his signature so much on other things. but uh, So this is the, his mix. You can also get the different mics available. Um, I think also you can play with the amount of water in it. So let's just hear what that sounds like. So that's quite noticeable with this patch without much water. And now let's put some more water in it. 
So very interesting, um, just sort of default sounds that you'd expect out of one of these instruments. Um, of course, being Spitfire, then you get some other kind of interesting stuff here. We've got um, these time bows. So here's the, the full mic control if you want all of that sort of thing. And there's some interesting stuff here in the Mercury synth as well. So these are now processed sounds. You've got a lot of control over a sort of LFO style of things as well in here if you want to sort of mess about with the way the frequency gets um, impacted. So this one is the Ricotti Mallets. Um, they're all played by Frank Ricotti. It's just your regular uh, selection of uh, tuned percussion instruments that you might expect. They're actually done in the Spitfire studio, so it's much more of a dry sound than you might get from um, some other things. Let's look at the Croctales. Uh, I think this one's an interesting one, the, the felt one. One of the things about this uh, instrument is it can be quite piercing, so that felt is really helping. But, you know, we can go for the more main uh, metal sound. And probably a fairly uh, common sound you might hear is these bow sounds. And rolls as well, so quite a lot in there. One of the things I like about these types of instruments is they add that little bit of ear candy. It's something that Dan Keane talks about and they can be really useful for adding a little bit of sparkle over the top of maybe a string part or other things. So very nice um, instruments. We've got a marimba here. Let's take a look at some of the other parts. Let's add some of those other mics in, let's see what happens. Uh, and also play with the rubber mallets. Uh, let's quickly just listen to some of these others, the xylophone. Some useful glitters here. And again, I quite like these hot rods. And finally, let's just quickly look at the Glock. Some glisses. The BBC Symphony Orchestra also has a, a really good range of tune percussion, but I think what's interesting about these ones are maybe some of these alternate techniques um, that can be really useful if you need that kind of slightly different sound than just a traditional, you know, playable uh, marimba or playable um, glockenspiel. So the last one I'm going to take a look at is the steel drums. So maybe a steel drum isn't something you might think about putting in your score, but what Spitfire have done, of course, is then manipulated these sounds. Let's take a look at them. So here are some of the traditional steel drum sounds. These cello pans are maybe a little less sort of idiomatic of the steel drums, which I think is quite nice. More of a normal sort of a standard steel drum sound. But 
a lot of these sounds have also been put into the eDNA engines. Just pick some of those patches up. Let's just see, we've got a rusty gate pad. Yeah, anyone who is on piano book probably has got involved in making this kind of thing. Let's see what Christian and the team came up with with steel drums. <laughs> Awesome filthy sequence. And one of the things that you can do with um, the EDNA engine is mess about with these so you can turn off the gate sequencer completely. And of course you can come back in here, turn them all back on again, but mess about with the with the rhythm um, between the two different patch bays, which is kind of interesting as well. So you can make your own patterns. So really, really easy to kind of get tweaking with these types of sounds. Let's look at one more. Surprisingly useful punchy fart bass. Yes. Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio started this year by asking us what we're going to do differently this year. And for me, I think it's going to be using more of these libraries within my compositions. We all know that Spitfire can be relied on to deliver us a bucket full of flautando when we need it. But how about using one of these other sounds in its place, or maybe just to augment that traditional string sound? What are your thoughts on these specialised libraries from Spitfire? And are there any ones that you'd like me to have a playthrough in a future video? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.